Hello and welcome to Housing and Economic Development, a program on Arlington Independent Media. I'm Michael Shea, the host of Housing and Economic Development. And in this episode, we're going to talk about the Columbia Pike Revitalization Organization. And we're joined by someone who's very well suited to help us answer questions about that, Takas Carantonis, who's the Executive Director of the CPRO. As it is actually known. Takas, thanks for coming on the program. Thank you for having us. So uh, let's just give a very broad history of the organization, because it's been around Arlington for quite a while and done a lot of important things. In, indeed, it has been in Arlington quite a while. Uh, we are now 39 years old, actually slightly past. Our incorporation was in May 1986. So uh, uh, we have been around for quite a while. Uh, people in uh, and, and Columbia Pike know, know that, because CIPRO has been with them all, all this time. But you're not uh, acting like a middle-aged organization. You've got a lot of energy, it seems like. Oh, of course we do. The Pike <laughs> has the energy. We draw. We are powered by Columbia Pike. <laughs> the, the, that's, that's the most important thing. We don't power Columbia Pike. Columbia Pike powers us okay. uh, in, terms of, um, in terms of the social input that CIPRO has always had. Um, in the 1980s, uh, the, um, the, uh, the, the region as a whole, Washington DC and Arlington, were rediscovering themselves uh, by means of the uh, incredible renaissance that they have been seeing coming through the uh, metro implementation. And uh, uh, the, the temperature, the economic, social, cultural temperature was uh, rising all over uh, the city where a metro line was available. Mm -hmm. And some places were left out of the metro system or weren't serviced by the metro system. And one of these was Columbia Pike. Uh, the um, difficulty there was that Columbia Pike was an already uh, urbanized place by then. Uh, one out of four Arlingtonians actually a little bit more than that, mm -hmm. uh, was living uh, in and around Columbia Pike in the famous uh, zip code 22204. Um, it was a, uh, a place where many newcomers would uh, settle. Uh, housing was available for uh, in the 1940s for uh, the new federal workers coming in, and the 1930s actually, coming in um, uh, through the New Deal economic development proposal and the enlargement of the federal government. And then uh, uh, it was also a place where uh, lots of immigrants would come. Uh, it was uh, the, the place of choice, not only because it was affordable uh, in terms of you know, how expensive it was. There was uh, just the supply there, mm -hmm. the garden apartments, and uh, the, uh, most of them are still visible there. Uh, in, in our in our corridor, they're still there. Uh, it's it was also the fact that uh, it was geographically very well suited. It's called Columbia Pike for a reason. It really goes. It's close to the major job center in the region that is the uh, uh, Washington D.C. area. Mm -hmm. uh, now, CPRO uh, was created uh, in the very first uh, place by stakeholders, including the county government, but by stakeholders like uh, property owners, merchants, and civic um, representatives, activists, uh, civic association presidents, uh, with the goal of finding a way to keep up with the rest of the region, mm -hmm. uh, recognizing that the region was already developing uh, based on an asset uh, that wasn't available on Columbia Pike. So how do we catch up? How do we keep? Uh, the uh, the economics of the place in in line with the economics of the rest of the county and the rest of the region. That was the reason why CIPRO came to be. Uh, a secondary reason, but most importantly, uh, a, a qualitative reason for the creation of CIPRO was the, uh, the, the, the understanding that a place needs management to uh, be sustainable and viable on the long term. Mm -hmm. to have a known, uh, the, its own micro uh, local agenda and, and uh, advocate success successfully uh, with all interests that are involved. So uh, learning from New York City, from Boston, from the mature and big cities of this nation, uh, we understood that we should have some kind of a partnership, an urban partnership, a desk, a um, a uh, board where mm -hmm. all these diverse, diverse uh, um, 
constituencies and uh, stakeholderships would actually meet and talk. How did you get engaged with Super? I am an economist. Okay. For for starters. You have my sympathies. Uh, <laughs> I'm also an economist. So that's what I can say. I can make yes. that joke. Yeah. Well, um, sometimes, but uh, uh, I'm an economist. And uh, like many economists, uh, I, I began my career as an economist working bre bread and butter issues like, uh, you know, consultancy for uh, big developers and uh, for um, uh, development consortiums, uh, needing economic viability analysis and all this uh, incredibly, for outsiders, boring uh, stuff, uh, mostly dismal also. So <laughs> Because we are not hired when things are obviously in a good shape. We are <laughs> mostly hired when things are obviously not not such a good shape. Right. Um, uh, and uh, I've been also trained as an urbanist. Uh, when it was one of the uh, very early passions. Um, and then I came to the United States uh, in the end of the 20th century. So 1998, I believe, mm -hmm. I, I set foot. Uh, working for a consulting uh, company based still in, in Spain and Switzerland. So um, uh, it, was a, it was a very promising time around here. We opened a, uh, an office and I, I came to that. And eventually I got to Washington, D.C. And uh, then I met my wife and things came together, fell together, <laughs> and we ended up in Arlington because uh, it was a very nice place. Uh, yeah. It was very nice. Uh, there was a, uh, you know, for, for economists, we, st we always ask, is the place governed properly? Is, is my tax, are my tax dollars really not squandered? <laughs> and w yes, it was one of the reasons why we looked to mm -hmm. find something in Arlington. And we found uh, something quite affordable, even by the, by the, by the measures of this metropolis mm -hmm. here, by the, uh, we find something on Columbia Pike. So I live basically where I work. I'm one of the very few fortunate ones <laughs> right. in, in this, uh, this big region, not only in Arlington. I just uh, want to circle back from it. Is your wife also an economist? No. Okay, good. No, That's probably no good she's thing. in life sciences. But she can still understand you. She can still understand me by uh, ignoring me most of the time in these <laughs> matters. Uh, <laughs> and with reason, as a scientist, she really likes, uh, a, you know, a, a sturdy, fact-based discourse. And sometimes uh, when we veer uh, off or derail into uh, the politics <laughs> of things and how these, um, you know, mangle up our uh, modeling, uh, this becomes then too, too complicated for her and right. she, she um, uh, cools that discussion down most of the time. So you had um, some respect for the way Arlington was governed, and Absolutely, then you, you, yes. get, you, in a sense, become part of the of the wider process by being involved with CIPRO. Absolutely, uh, Arlington was for me one of the places in the United States. Uh, I came from Germany actually, and then uh, from from uh, the part of Spain that was emerging in the uh, in the 90s mm -hmm. as uh, very strong urban uh, uh, development areas. And they were, uh, you know, they were based on, you know, heavy investment in infrastructure, heavy returns on this investment, and uh, all the things that are, uh, you know, uh, uh, connected today in the, in the public discourse with the emergence of big cities and, and, and world cities uh, today. And I saw in Arlington one of the uh, textbook examples of how this is possible in mm -hmm. a smaller place, but a uh, place with a uh, sturdy governance base and a, a good governance vision uh, that, that delivers not only to the established and usual suspects, the, right. you know, the big interests, etc., but also delivers a huge dividend to its, um, to its uh, citizens. I actually, it was a... Uh, I can even pinpoint the, the moment. Um, I went, I was invited in the Finnish embassy uh, for uh, some nice public relations act of, the, of this embassy selling uh, the new Helsinki uh, urban planning and how they do it in, uh, in the northern Scandinavia, which is a, a luxury to, to, <laughs> to enjoy uh, being told about that. And uh, there was also a member of the Arlington County Board uh, there. 
and it was my first encounter with an official of Arlington. And he was so comfortable and so conversant in these mm. uh, things that it really impressed me. Uh, I have to tell you that uh, before I had the same conversations with other public officials uh, all across the United States, from Florida to uh, Washington State and from uh, uh, Massachusetts or Maine, I, I remember that, to Texas. And uh, uh, there was just a... Uh, my, my impression was these people are really naturals in that. How come? What's the, what's the deal with Arlington? What's, what is different about Arlington? What is the kind of uh, water they drink or so? They were uh, this, uh, the, the being conversant in a critical and informed way about smart growth, about right. uh, uh, long-term planning, etc. What are some of the activities and uh, programs that CIPRO, is CIPRO is uh, first and foremost a placemaking right. agency today. Right. Place is a uh, economically and socially and culturally very important uh, uh, driver for a region. It's the way you get people, uh, residents, first and foremost, your local neighbors, to uh, buy in into their neighborhoods, actually, not only to own a piece of land or a an apartment or rent something there, but actually to be participants of uh, the civic life in a, in a neighborhood, to create enough civic life and to create uh, the moments that make you own your place mm -hmm. and as such being proud of your place and uh, through this buy-in defend and evolve your place, invest in your place actually. And uh, early enough, uh, I think across the nation, we understood that this is not emerging, uh, you know, in a uh, uh, natural way out of just the fact that people live together in a na neighborhood. It needs to be managed and promoted all the time. And for that reason, uh, CIPRO is a key agent mm -hmm. in achieving exactly that. Now, CIPRO, what CIPRO began with was the, the most normal thing in the world, like having a a farmer's market. Mm -hmm. The farmer's market of um, uh, Columbia Pike, the main one, because we are now opening a second one, uh, the main one is 20 years old. There was nothing before there. Right. Uh, I can tell you, yes, there was something before, but it was completely lost over the years. Mm -hmm. uh, this, these were local grocery shops and, you know, what, what you would uh, uh, consider the natural um, fabric, commercial fabric of a neighborhood. But modern times have taken a toll on this uh, right. fabric, so it had to be reconstructed through uh, this kind of intervention by creating place through creating an event that is, in that case, a farmer's market. Then short after that, we created a cultural event, which was the Columbia Pike Blues Fest that today is a, right. a huge uh, undertaking, brings 10,000 people once. Uh, the point is, though, that the, the means that CIPRO had, it's a small partnership. Even right. today, the, the, right. the nominal balance sheet of CIPRO, to talk economist terms, it's $250,000. I mean, don't think that this is really a, a huge organization. I mean, just right. uh, in comparison to our established business improvement district, we are a fraction, a decimal fraction right. Right. Of, uh, of their uh, balance sheet um, uh, power, so right. to say. So uh, it's still a neighborhood organization, uh, more or less. However, uh, for being that, I think CIPRO moves a lot. Right. We have been able, just this summer, uh, 22 events in uh, 12 weeks. When I say events, these are the movie screenings outside. Right. Uh, the, we have music events. There are, uh, the, we call them place activators. So the whole point is, uh, we get residents out of their living rooms right. into the public space that is now available because just three or four years ago, the public space wasn't available. We didn't have a, a square, a single square, right. uh, a viable square on the entire Columbia Pike corridor. So 40,000 people, 40,000 uh, residents didn't have a single public space at walkable or you know, defendable distance from right. from where they live. So their choice was sitting in their living room or going down to the garage, taking the car, and go somewhere else. Right. 
where the, this public space or entertainment space, or just being out in the public right, right. Uh, realm, uh, was available to them. It wasn't available to. It, it was a bedroom corridor. This right. is how we we used to uh, uh, approach Columbia Pike in the 80s when Cipro was created. And from a bedroom corridor, we're still in the quest to convert that in a living urban space with all the amenities that uh, such space deserves and demands. Uh, being a destination space, a destination place, that means a place where people can fulfill the entire circle of everyday life. The long-term plan for Columbia Pike, it was, that itself was a long-term process. Yes. And the plan was adopted, I'm forgetting. The last name. phase was last in 2012, phase. in okay. July 2012. And the first phase was in 2002, 2003 actually. Right. Um, so what role did CPRO play in that? And or You noticed correctly that it took a long time yes. to do that. This is because the name plan is actually um, uh, a little bit misleading. It's a technical term. It really describes the delivered document. Right. Uh, but uh, it was an initiative, the Columbia Pike Initiative, that dates back to 1985. But in, in and you know, serendipitously, CPRO was created in 1986. How could that happen? <laughs> but um, actually, the, the, the Columbia Pike Initiative as a um, political initiative formulated and um, expressed by the Arlington County Board back in 1998 okay. uh, took, began to be, let's say, a governance project mm -hmm. in 1998. Um, it's actually a social contract. Mm -hmm. These are 10 neighborhoods, uh, at some points even 11 and 12 neighborhoods, who uh, brought up, gardened up their civic leadership Right. And in and got involved in a an area wide effort to uh, revitalize their common arterial space, which is Columbia Pike. The interesting thing is that Columbia Pike, very often, even now in in in, in normal street speak in Arlington, is more or less considered one area, one one neighborhood. Right. You will hear a lot about Cherrydale or Aurora Highland, but um, Columbia Pike is still, even in the common common language, right. like a one neighborhood, but it's a huge neighborhood. Right. It's, uh, huge six, neighborhoods. Yes, it's it's a it's an agglomeration, a confederation, I would always <laughs> say, of of ten neighborhoods, who com who have uh, recognized that they have this asset in common, and right. that is this is their their only infrastructural uh, point of gravity, right. and their entire life civic, economic, cultural relates to that. It's never disengaged or disassociated from Columbia Pike. People from all sorts of micro regions in the Pike have converged to create first the land use plan, like tra traditional governance begins with land use because this is something that government can do. It's right. uh, something that it can be, you know, plant on. You can actually vote on land use, how land use is done. And then uh, the second part is the housing plan, which is the Columbia Pike Neighborhoods Plan. The first it was the Columbia Pike Form-Based Code. And CIPRO was the concentrator uh, for the Form-Based Code of all these diver diverse interests mm -hmm. uh, who, be who flare up when we are talking land use, which is the biggest uh, economic asset available on the Pike. Right. We don't have any industries. Our industry is land and the housing and commercial and, uh, and uh, residential development that goes on that land. It was like that, it is like that, and it will continue to be like that. So these people have an interest to um, uh, sit together in one place to talk about these things, as also the, the rest of us, the civic layer, has also a, an right. interest to be a part of this uh, discussion. And this is a discussion that is not academic. It's a discussion that has concrete, specific deliverables like these two plans. Right. Uh, and we should probably just clarify, so the plan gets adopted after years of discussion. Absolutely, yes. And it, but it's sort of a living document in a sense. It doesn't, really, it doesn't really lay out 
specific this, 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 this. Yes. It lays out principles. And it lays out principles, but it also is very specific about the vision of how right. uh, uh, everybody involved wants the place to look, feel, and work right. uh, in the next 10, uh, the foreseeable future, as in the next right. 10, 20 years. Right. It is a living document, but it's quite descriptive on, on the vision. Right. The vision is to have a uh, main uh, arterial region mm -hmm. that houses as many people as possible close to an arterial to, to the arterial arterial axis that is served by the best possible infrastructure so as to uh, deliver uh, the services and uh, the necessary infrastructural support to all residents in the most efficient per capita way. And uh, that's, that's why the plan, uh, as typically as in Arlington, ropes in density on the uh, arterial right. uh, road. This wasn't the case before. One has to understand that in times before agreed upon land use. Right. Things were happening just like that. So you could have a 12-story building on a hill uh, really far away, like more than a half a mile away from any viable bigger road, sewer system, public transportation. So, so things were happening in uh, complete oblivion of all other infrastructural um, necessities just because it was possible. Uh, even the garden apartments we have, uh, we housed all of a sudden the sevenfold of the population, the pre-existing population in the 1940s, without any significant infrastructural improvement. And what happened right after that? Uh, parking wars happened right, right after right. that. Right. The streetcar is a big issue. Yeah. So what role has CIPRO had in, in uh, the streetcar, and, and what's happening with the streetcar? Street, the, 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 the Columbia Pike streetcar, which is actually also misnomer, is the Arlington starter line. It's a, it's a, uh, a multi-jurisdictional effort. It's, right. a, it's a bigger piece of infrastructure that serves uh, Columbia Pike as well as other regions. Actually, from our point of view, connects Columbia Pike with the job center, Crystal City, and Job Entertainment Cultural Center, Crystal City, uh, and also with Skyline and the Route 7. Right. So the um, CIPRO, CIPRO was a, a, a part, as I mentioned before, of the uh, uh, land use and then housing planning for the entire corridor. These were the CIPRO stakeholders. CIPRO was one of the places where all these people congregated, etc. Now, the infrastructure part couldn't, couldn't miss. I mean, it was. It was uh, a part of uh, an intense uh, thinking about how do we move right. all these people around and where do we connect them? Right. And how are we going to do it differently uh, from what we have done and tested before? So what did we test before? We tested, Columbia Pike is one straight road. Uh, right. Very, very unusual for Virginia because it was chartered by Congress. This is why the road is straight for, for, for its uh, transition uh, through the hilly landscape of the heights of the Potomac Basin. Federal charter dates from 19... 200, two, no. 200 years ago. 200 years, yeah. right, right. Yeah. So in uh, okay. 2010, we, we, um, uh, we uh, celebrated the 200th anniversary of Columbia Pike. 1810 was the uh, charter. Mm -hmm. So uh, in 2010, we knew a couple of things more. First, yes, the existence of the arterial road attracts a lot of housing, a lot of development on the, on the road. And uh, this is normal, this is logical. And this uh, tends to, um, to increase by the time. Right. The, the very point of what uh, we, the experience we have to, uh, to transmit to everybody, to all our interlocutors across the entire region is uh, infrastructure shapes the way a place evolves uh, re in terms of residential development and in terms of commercial and economic development. Right. So, uh, so we tried first the 1940s, the 1950s with uh, the individual transportation, cars. We had the pike, huge asset four to five lanes wide uh, they were uh, they, they were they served the f most residents for quite a while they also created 
the fact that the, the ro road was used created some of the first commercial clusters in Columbia Pike. Westmont Shopping Center, for example, is one on George Mason. The major intersections, Glebe Road, yeah. um, uh, George Mason, these are the, the, the first clusters. But we saw that uh, residential development was stronger than that. And we got right. parking wars already back then. Uh, and then relatively late in the game, we discovered that public transportation is really a necessity. And actually, it's not, it's slightly more than 10 years ago that uh, we got the, uh, uh, the, the Pike Ride uh, bus system, a yeah. very, very high capacity bus system. 16,000 people use it every day. However, um, despite the fact that it alleviated the transportation needs, it didn't produce any economic development at all. In fact, the, f the mere existence of a six hour head, six, sorry, a six minute head uh, time um, uh, availability of a bus system didn't produce any new shops, right. it didn't produce any uh, necessity, it didn't, it didn't really depress the tendency of most residents on Columbia Pike to actually own a car and right. drive around with that. So the next was, uh, the next idea was to have a high capacity system. The streetcar uh, was born, the modern streetcar was born out of this uh, set of uh, considerations. It was, the, the, the idea was in talks, is now has been now in talks for more than 12 years. Since modern streetcars were reinstated in other places in the world, and we observed that this is actually working very, very, very well. Mm -hmm. for all three deliverables that are important to us. Economic development, uh, residential development with a mixed housing choice uh, palette. Full so range, affordable. And full range, yeah, affordable, because rate. not only one, one type of, uh, one type of, not only affordable or only market right. rate. And uh, the third, that is the cultural and uh, public real uh, um, development, which is the urban, the way you perceive an urban place. Right. And you begin to appreciate that and buy into that, being right. you the citizen on the street or being you an investor who right. looks to put $100 million in a... What's interesting in land. some ways, uh, you talk about Colony Pike in the 80s, some of the issues and the mm -hmm. moving of people and the parking wars and yes. the very urban problems Problem. in a county that wasn't being thought of as being urban still. Yes, so because really, Columbia really Pike was urban bef before Arlington yeah. had its uh, court. It was uh, because of the straight line, because of the direct connection right. to, to the 14th Street Bridge, right. basically. Uh, the, the, um, the Columbia Pike was housing a lot of people. Right, and right. it was housing a lot of people in a, in a way that wasn't at all managed back then. Right. Not like today. Uh, um, it, before 1970, or even, yeah, before 1970, before the 70s, uh, in Arlington, uh, land was an expendable right. resource. Uh, one could really build, a developer could come in and say, what do we need today? So right. I want to put 1,500 right. units in Barcroft. There you go. Right. And, 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 and 900 <laughs> units in, uh, in Fillmore Gardens. There you go, into the neighborhood without any real right. connection, without any, And know. those days are just long uh, gone. They're, they, yeah. they are long gone. They were unsustainable in the long term because they right. created a dynamic of concentration that was man wasn't manageable anymore. Right. We are out of time. Yes. But this has been Great. a very fascinating discussion. We'll have to have you back in to talk even more about a lot of these issues. Okay. Talking. Thank you very much for coming on. Thank you. I want to quickly thank our AIM volunteer crew, Daria Baguna, Janessa Jackson, Hilary Freer, Steve Cordell, and Falcha in the booth. Uh, they've been all great today. Uh, thank you very much, and thanks for watching. I also want to thank Takas for working so hard on Columbia Pike. Thank you. All right.